Hello everybody, my name is Ray. Welcome to the Evangelical Dark Web. Today, we're going to be doing a follow-up on our last video on Jason Whitlock and the controversy surrounding his men's conference, his Christian men's conference, because he invited a Mormon, Glenn Beck, to speak at a Christian men's conference. And he's repeatedly marketed this event as a Christian men's conference, despite having a Mormon speak at it. Now, Glenn Beck did what Glenn Beck does. He was a, he's a Mormon. He preached at this conference as a Mormon. He did not, as Jason Whitlock say, you know, said in his reaction to the controversy, only go there to talk history. That is not what Glenn Beck did. And we have the clips to uh, showcase that. But first, I want to let you know, Evangelical Dark Web is a Christian news gathering and commentary ministry. You can support our work over at evangelicaldarkweb.org slash join. That is linked in the description below. That's our Patreon-like system that gives you bonus content, bonus articles, stuff like that. But the least you can do is like this video, subscribe to the channel, to the podcast, if you are new. So just to reiterate how this event was marketed as a Christian men's conference, even the day of. This is the email I, I got on the morning of uh, on Saturday morning. Uh, it says division. It opens with uh, division is a choice. Let's reject it and unite in fellowship. Of our Lord and Savior. So, again, that's talking about Jesus. And then at the end of the email, it says, We're here in Nashville at Rocktown promoting the King of Kings. So, Jason Whitlock said that this was about, you know, closing the racial divide among men and inspire us to join and fight against the wicked forces cor corrupting American culture. I would argue that, you know, the LDS is one of those wicked forces that has an influence in corrupting American culture and, you know, dates back uh, almost 100 years or 200 years. But actually over 200 years at this point. Uh, but but uh, Jason Whitlock is not about uh, doing that. Evidently, he is uh, taking an ecumenical approach to the issue of Mormons and Christianity and... That will show up in these clips. Here is the clip. It comes from Protestia, who was live recording the conference as it was going on, apparently, and clipped this uh, Glenn Beck uh, sermon, so to speak, at Jason Whitlock's Roll Call event. Roll tape. Uh, I just have to start with my testimony of Jesus Christ. I am an alcoholic. Um, I grew up in an abusive family. Mark's story and my story are, are kind of similar. Yeah, my dad but you can break the cycle. My mother committed suicide when I was 13 years old. She was an alcoholic. My father was an alcoholic when he died. And child abuse happened in our family and in his family and in his family. For generations it happened. And it was my decision after I sobered up. We're going to break this in our family once and for all. And it is hard to do, and there's only one way to do it. Surrender to Jesus Christ. That's it. So Glenn Beck, a Mormon, is trying to point people to Jesus, but Mormons don't really believe in the same Jesus as Christians. And, you know, even Catholics aren't as, you know, get Jesus right a lot more than Mormons do. I think arguably, you know, other cultish uh, aspects get Jesus right more than Mormons do. Mormons are arguably less um, monotheistic than Muslims are, so it's just bad news bears all around. And that's what our country needs to do. And unfortunately, the only way you can do that is if you're driven to your knees. I had no other place. I was on my carpet. I was living in a an apartment complex, I had lost my family and my children and my job and everything else. And I was on the carpet in this little apartment that I called the United Nations building because I was the only one that lived there that spoke any English. Uh, and I remember being on the ground, feeling sorry for myself. And I realized I was either going to repeat my mother's life or I was gonna get up and get up every day after and beg the Lord for help. Three years later, I was baptized, and my life changed overnight. Whatever is happening in your life, shed it. Shed it. You are so much more powerful. Believe me, I wouldn't be able to be here today. Mark knows about the media. 
He wouldn't make it. I wouldn't have made it if I had something to hide. You terrify people when you have no, nothing to hide. You're like, well, we're going to be looking into you. Go ahead. <laughs> and you terrify them. So I wanted to pause right there because the premise of what he's saying, I think, is not as helpful as it, you know, I don't really think it's all that helpful. It's very Rick Warren-y. Uh, Rick Warren basically believes that like, we're going to catch people at their bottoms. So that way we're going to reach those people. That way, when they're up at the top, they'll stay with us it is kind of the Rick Warren method of evangelism. And Glenn Beck basically says in order to know that you need Christ, you have to hit rock bottom. And he alludes that to his alcoholism testimony. And again, he didn't exactly come out of that thinking that he needed Christ. And apparently it took him three years to get baptized in the LDS. So I don't know how directly related that is. But anyway, here's the thing. We can actually win by, first of all, having more kids, raising our kids, and not letting the government raise our kids. And then, you know, obviously working hard in the meantime. Our nation's already been driven to its knees, and it's still not repenting collectively. Now, maybe we're going to see some revival actions uh, activity, but by and large, we've been... How much... Where would we yet be struck as a nation? Where? So, I, I think Glenn Beck's uh, premise is wrong, but, you know, I, I don't really like Glenn Beck's political analysis. It's kind of phony to me because he fell for COVID. Well, this has been a slow impact. We won't make it through the next New Year's if men don't stand up. Men of God and peace. People who understand the full armor of God. That's not sending you into a war with a gun. That's sending you into battle with God and the truth and peace and the sword of that truth, his word. They are afraid. Why do you think they're silencing everybody? They are terrified of the truth. Speak the truth. If you don't know how to find the truth, get your face back into the scriptures. The only thing that will be your compass now in these confusing times, because remember, even the very elect, elect will be deceived. You must be one with the Spirit of God. You must have the ever-present Spirit of the Holy Spirit with you. And when it says, turn around, go back, head the other way, you better do it. And it's a muscle. The more you obey, the stronger the voice gets. So, that is Glenn Beck, and that was some pretty horrendous... Um, exegesis if we want to call it that if we even want to be so generous as to call that exegesis that was horrendous so glenn beck loves ephesians 6 i don't know if you knew that but i you know i've read glenn beck's books before and that's why i think he's a phony because he doesn't live out his books so he's very big on uh the sword of the spirit uh Ephesians 6 and the armor of God, very big on that. And then he connects that with the, um, the verse about, you know, if the, if even the elect would be deceived, which he obviously failed that verse because the implication of that verse is that the elect will not be deceived. It is actually impossible that they would be deceived. Now people get on John MacArthur for saying that it's hypothetically possible that someone will have the mark of the beast then repent and be saved by Christ after having set, taken the mark. Now, again, we can disagree over the eschatology that led him to make that claim. But Glenn Beck is not making that claim. Glenn Beck is saying that professing Christians will be deceived into taking the mark. That is what he is saying, that professing Christians will be deceived. That's not what the Bible says. And then, obviously, Jason Whitlock said that Glenn Beck was there to talk history. Glenn Beck was there to preach. 
and to preach his false gospel and to preach his terrible message and his hyperbolic boomerism because this world will make it to 2025 unless Jesus returns. Nothing that happens in politics is going to stop that. The world is much bigger than just the United States. We have to have a game longer than November 5th, 2024. I believe that's election day. Um, we got to be thinking beyond that. But Glenn Beck can't even think beyond uh, 2025 without hyperbolic uh, messaging. What happens if Joe Biden wins and we make it to 2026 even? Is Glenn Beck going to say that the men stood up in 2024? I kind of doubt it. But anyway, Jason Whitlock um, was wrong and or lied. That's possible. But at the end of the day, it was a poor decision to have a Mormon speak at a Christian men's conference. I hope lessons were learned. I don't think they were learned. And they're going to have to be learned the hard way and with more confrontation. The confrontation did not occur at that conference. Now, Vody Bauckham spoke before Glenn Beck, by the way. But Virgil Walker didn't. So who's going to call that out? Mark Driscoll was willing to call out the sword swallower at a men's conference in Evangelifish world. But these G3 bros aren't willing to do that because it's their friend. Jason Whitlock being their, a friend of uh, Virgil Walker, by the way. So, that's sad. That's not fearless. A little bit pathetic. And it's not manly, as the conference would indicate. So... Those are my thoughts on the matter. My name is Ray. This is the Evangelical Dark Web. If you like this kind of content, subscribe to the channel. If you are new, stay based. Christ is king, and we will catch you on the next one.